everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I have an AL80B over there and another AL811H. I'm waiting on parts, another amp being delivered today. So, I'm going to do some work on the multiband amp. The more I get done, the more excited I get, and the more drive I end up getting, you know. So... I'm on a roll, I, I'm in the mood to work on it, so I'm going to work on it. Okay, so I'm going to mount an SO239 over here in this hole for the input. I'm going to punch a hole over here for the RJ1A for the input switching. Nice short lead length from the connector over to the common connection on that relay. I'm going to run Teflon RG400 from the relay and I'll secure it so it comes over this way and connects over here to this tuner for the input circuit this air variable capacitor I'll ground it down here with a solder tab and also put a solder tab over here to hold it in place and then the hot will connect over here okay and these are in parallel okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I have to plug these holes down here all these little holes from when I built it before and then took it apart so I'll put a standoff over here. I'll try to reuse that hole there and that one there where I had the original coil. The original coil is number six, copper, uh, solid copper wire. So I, I had some of this. I'm going to use this. I have a whole bunch of, I have a huge box of coils. Just tons, of, it's in the other room. So um, I'll mount that and then I'm going to run RG400 from over here. From this connection, it'll do the same with the solder tabs um, and put a standoff over here. And I'll put the uh, 0.01, actually, I might have to run it over here this way. Drill a hole, solder tab, solder tab, and I'm going to do the same junction setup with the 0.01 caps, three in, either, three in each side um, to each side of the filament. Okay, so then. I'll be at the point where I can run the straps and start you know, from each cap down to the coil on each side and start tapping the coil. I mean, the uh, yeah, the coil to the uh, rotary switch. And then the input circuit will be done. Next step will be the uh, biasing diodes. And I'll mount the protection board. And uh, go from there, you know. Um, a piece RG400 will come off the RJ1A, go out to the parallel, you know, come through the ARF deck and go to the paralleled RJ2Bs for the output switching, all Jennings. And uh, I'll mount the vacuum variable caps for the output network. I already have the holes pre-drilled, pre and then I'll... Take the uh, right angle drives, like this one right here, measure everything up, go through the front panel. Um, this is a, you know, recessed panel. There's another panel I've shown in the other videos if you want to see it. That already has the metering. I'm going to try to reuse those meters. If I can't, then, really going to try, but if I can't, then I'll have a new panel made, yep. you know, new metering and label everything and you know so uh, that's about it for now okay so I'll explain more as I go along so stay tuned and I will see you guys soon please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see videos as I post them I'm doing all of this from my brain you know I'm no uh, I don't have another RF deck here to copy. I've never seen another one to, to copy. This is all it's been laid out by just experience over the years and every screws that go through this. I've been taking the side cover off to, to access the inside of the RF deck. So all right, so stay tuned. You can see the zip tied filament wires and clamp. This is nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Won't wiggle around or anything when it's on. And I have a solid cover with a hole. The blower is going to be down in the bottom compartment. 
force the air through, I'll have a pressure interlock switch like I did with the 6 meter amp. A lot of the same stuff from the 6 meter amp will go in this. Same, same theory, same stuff, you know. Um, same size plate supply, just more voltage because I don't have to worry about the um, internal capacitance like I did with the other amp. You know, the higher frequency you need less capacitance on the plate side so the output network won't be an LPI. Um, multiband obviously so but like I said a lot of the same stuff from the other one going into this one just reusing a cabinet I have lots of parts here this is a budget build but it's like uh, like I said prototype to show everybody it can do it and um, I know there's some guys over the Middle East that like big stuff and you know your your uh, rules are different over there so um, progressively shorting rotary switches, a roller inductor, I'm going to make another video on that at some point. Actually, I'll make one right after this, probably. Well, I'm going with the rotary switch versus roller inductor. There are a lot of negatives associated with roller inductors. It's like the cheap, easy, like anybody can do way of making <laughs> a multi-band amp, okay? So, um... I'll be back. I'll stop rambling. See you guys soon. AmpRepairGuy.com 203-892-4119. Lots of little holes to plug up. But easy, easy peasy. Okay, see you guys soon. Okay, so I'm back. I'm done for the day. Two more amps showed up. So I had a little while to work on this. Two and a half, three hours or so. Everything just takes time, you know, just to do it right. So I have the coil in. I ended up repositioning one of the standoff locations. I'll have to plug that hole. So I'll have to see if this tunes up on 160 meters with the proper cue and then I'll tap it. But So I installed the RJ1A back there. Super short lead length between the input SO239 and the common connection. This is temporary. It's folded over the shield. See the lead length is nice and short over here. The unshielded lead length. Uh, the other piece of coax, this is actually RG142, it's not R, um, RG400, it's, it's this uh, solid center conductor, it's what I had, so. Anyway, um, another piece of this will go up to the RJ2Vs, so uh, it'll also be soldered right there, they'll be soldered together. So, I'll end up clamping it to the wall, clamp here, clamp here, clamp under there, I love everything being nice and neat, so. I have 3.01s in parallel with another three over here on the other side. The junction's connected to the center of the coax. One side for one side of the filament, other side for the other, okay? Use kept nuts with the screws to secure them nice and tight. You see everything? So I brought the, this is the input coax right here. And, sorry. Solder tab down there, as you can see, another solder tab here, it's all soldered. Short unshielded lead length, I'll have the strap come and then go around. And then here's the output, it goes to the cathode of the tube. Strap also, come around. So, that's about it for today. I'm going to do a roller inductor video, I don't know if that'll be next now because I have the other amplifiers, but... So you get the idea. It's coming along. I'm getting excited. Okay, so please stay tuned for more videos to come. I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. And once again, amprepairguy.com, 203-892-4119. And the website is amprepairguy.com. Like I said before, if you have an amplifier that you need repaired, one that you see in my videos, feel free to give me a call. There are certain mo uh, makes I'm not working on anymore, like Henry. Fortunately, I can't get parts. I don't work on alphas anymore. Uh, so, please give me a call. 73. And please like, share, and subscribe.